Today we are going to continue our discussion on the subject logistics management. We've been able to go through models one, two, and three, and today we are going to look at model four. And in model four, we are looking at logistics information systems. Logistics information systems. Our objectives include to appreciate the importance of effective and efficient utilization of information for logistics management and also to learn about the order cycle and how automating the cycle can improve customer service. We are also going to learn about general types of information technology and their logistical applications. And then we also examine the internet influence on logistics. And then we also look at some few information technology challenges. In this session specifically, we will have a brief overview, look at the benefits of information you know, use effective information usage, and then we look at other cycle management. We're looking also at logistics information systems. We will have some overview of um, the logistics, you know, technologies or logistics information systems technology. We look at barcodes, POS, EDI, RFID, DSS, and artificial intelligence as well. Then we look at the internet influence on logistics. And then some few information technology challenges that are faced when we are managing the logistics forces. A bit of introduction. We know that computer information technology has been utilized to support logistics for many, many years. I've already established the fact that information technology is an enabler of logistics you know, development. And as long as we continue to see growth in information technology, we will likely also see lots of development and growth in logistics management. Throughout various functions of logistics, we see how IT supports the entire process. For example, in transportation, in procurement, in packaging, in demand forecasting, in inventory control, and even in our warehousing and other kinds of activities that we see in logistics. We use a lot of information technologies to support, you know, in implementing the various activities. It grew rapidly with the introduction of microcomputers in the early 1980s. Information technology is that seen as the key factor that will affect the, the growth and development of logistics over time. It is an area that offers considerable potential for improving logistics performance and if we want to see lots of growth in the area we we have to really begin to integrate log, um, it in most of the logistics functions that we have organizations of all types whether manufacturing organization or services are utilizing computers to support logistics activities and those who are able to integrate you know it in their logistics activities stand the chance of you know, increasing their, their competitiveness in the market. It is a key source of competitive advantage. And those who are making good investments in the area are seen to be leaders in the market. This is especially true for companies thought to be on the leading edge, that is leaders in the industry. So when you look at various industries, you realize that most of the leaders in such industries have really integrated IT into their logistics processes. Such firms are heavy users of computers for order entry, order processing, finished goods, inventory control, performance measurement, fleet audit or payment, and warehousing, plus other logistics activities that I talked about. So information is a basic necessity for decision making and forms an essential part of all management functions. We don't make decisions without information. Managers are able to make decisions based on the kind of information they have access to. Information is so vital that, you know, organizations pay a lot of attention to just make sure that 
the information they receive is of high quality. It is so important because the decision to produce, when to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and even the person or the customers you are producing for will all depend on the kind of information that you have. And that is why firms are constantly making a lot of analysis to understand their market and the environment in which they operate. So you need information, economic information. You need information regarding the social and cultural backgrounds of your, your clients or your customers. You need information concerning the legal framework within the environment in which you are operating. You need to understand you know, issues concerning politics. You need to understand environmental issues. And you need to also understand even, you know, issues concerning different countries in the global marketplace. So when you need information about the economy, it is not restricted to just the local market or just the national market, but beyond the national and even beyond international. You need information concerning the global market in order for you to make very effective decisions regarding your business because now competition has become so global having access to global information is key to improving your business and what we're saying is that information is a basic necessity it is essential it is so important for managers to get access to the required you know information in order to make the right kinds of decisions in in managing their business and that is why it is essential that the information that we are receiving is very timely and also accurate. When information delays, management decision can really be affected. And sometimes because of delays, we are unable to make very you know, good decisions and we are unable to overcome lots of uncertainties in the marketplace. Accurate information is very, very key. When information is distorted, one likely, you know, effect is the bullwhip effect that we talked about. And we know when there's a bullwhip effect, which is the magnification of the variability in other information. What it does is that it, it increases, you know, the cost of operations, including manufacturing, including inventory, including warehousing costs, and other costs, you know, variables that we have already talked about in previous models. And that is why it is very, very important. We say that valuable information by itself is very critical for effective management and when we say valuable information it goes beyond timeliness and accuracy to even issues that there are security issues the information is protected and then there are also issues of transparency it is so transparent to all the key stakeholders or let's say all those who need access who have the legitimate right to get access to the information we need information that is valuable in order to make effective you know, decisions in our management, without which we are going to experience a lot of ineffectiveness within the system. The degree to which we achieve efficiency and effectiveness in our business operation is highly dependent on how valuable an information is. For example, when information delays, it is likely we will produce too later than we require it to be. Alternatively, if the information delays, it is very, very, you know, likely that we might produce way beyond what our customers require. And we know the effect of producing more than what is required. One likely effect is that we are going to have high inventory levels and we are going to increase the cost associated with our inventory. When information delays, it's also likely we are going to produce lower than is expected. And when quantities, you know, are lower than the right quantities that the customer requires. It is also likely we will experience a stock out. And the effect is also very bad for organizations. Customers get dissatisfied. It is also likely that our reputation gets punished. It is also likely that our potential clients may also be lost due to, you know, bad publicity done by our, our current, you know, customers who have had bad experiences and all together can influence the level of profitability and opportunity for business growth. Therefore, in an information system, it is very, very important that organizations commit to investing the right resources in the collection of data, in the storage of data, 
in the processing, retrieval, and transmission of all kinds of data. Within an information system, organizations must be committed to investing the right resources. Otherwise, when the wrong information is collected, it can affect the decision maker. And that is why we need to make investment to collect the right kind of data and also find the appropriate way of storing plus other elements within the whole system. The transmission of the information involves its movement to and from various functional centers. And looking at the fact that information transmission actually, you know, comprises so many different functions, if there's no right investment in how we manage information, there's going to be a fragmentation, you know, among the various players within the supply chain. Remember that in our definition of supply chain, we have understood that we apply an integrative approach to managing the entire process. Anything that causes a fragmentation has the supply chain profitability. And it, it makes it very difficult for us to compete within the market. Now, when we invest in IT, IT has various advantages because it enables us to have an efficient information collection, storage, and retrieval. We have already established the fact that information is a basic necessity when we are making management decisions. Therefore, if we invest in IT, it has the opportunity to improve on how we collect every kind of data, store, and also retrieve in order to improve on the quality of information we are using to making decisions. And not only that, improving the quality, also in terms of efficiency. Remember that the information we are using, we need to make sure the information is received in the most efficient manner. When it is so costly to get access to information, it will equally, you know, increase the logistics cost. But if you want to reduce logistics cost, one of the sure ways is to invest in IT to reduce the cost associated with information. That is why investment in IT helps to reduce the cost of the collection, the cost of storing information, and the cost of retrieving information. It also helps the availability of information as and when required and in the desired format. It is very important that when managers need information, they do not go through too much difficulty. Remember, we have said that information timeliness helps to just improve productivity. Therefore, if managers are able to get quick access to information, they are able to speed their production processes. Their decision-making is fast or quick, and that enhances productivity. And when information is so available when it is required and they can easily get access to, it actually improves the flexibility with which organizations operate. And then it does facilitate decision-making, as I've said, including monitoring and control of activities. In logistics, it involves a managerial function of planning, implementing, and controlling. Now, if you want your managerial function to be very quick, then you should be able to get good access or quick access to information. One sure way of improving the accessibility of information is through an investment in IT. And once that is done, it can speed the entire process of making decisions. It is relatively easier using IT to monitor the progress of, of, of activities. Now we see organizations making investments in statistical process controls in order to control activities with ease. Now, once we are investing in IT to even do monitoring and control, visibility is improved, making it relatively easier for organizations to perform such functions. It does provide flexibility in decision-making, especially in times of change. We've already established that flexibility measures an ability of an organization to adapt to changing situations. There are lots of changes that come in the marketplace. And two major sources are the demand and that of what supply. And because we face uncertainties in the marketplace, we must constantly find a way of building flexibility in our system or capacity to adapt to such changes. One sure way of improving such flexibility is through information system. Information system makes it easier to even learn about the environment. Learning about environment through an IT system is easier. For example, we can go to the internet 
and easily learn of what is happening in other parts of the world with ease, without necessarily having to travel to those countries. And it's all because IT is enabling it. So the improved um, disability makes the system so flexible to adapt to changing situations. And it makes it easy. And the fact that with the investment of IT, it allows for simultaneous work, also allows for extreme level of flexibility to adapt to situations. Um, when you invest in IT, it also enables a strong coordination among the various units, therefore making the entire system more flexible than when we are using the manual system. It has reduced variability in the supply chain. When we use IT, most of the distortions can easily be avoided. For example, the use of point of sale data can allow suppliers to have real time information regarding you know, the, the inventory status of their clients, thereby using the same information to make their focus. One of the problems in the supply chain is that when our partners are using different information for the forecasting, we see too large variability across the entire supply chain. But through IT, the same information can be shared across, thereby reducing the variability. And we already know the importance of reducing variability in the supply chain. One importance is that we are able to reduce costs associated with excesses in production and also shortages in production as well. It also leads to better coordination of manufacturing, marketing, distribution, and all other functional you know, units within an organization. They get well coordinated because information you know, brings them on board. The same information is easily shared. Usually using IT, we are able to share the same information at the same time without information being turned in turn. And so activities can be done in a simultaneous manner. Once they get access to real data, they are able to function in a more coordinated manner because the understanding will be well developed. And also at the same time, they get understanding. It has streamlined other processing and reduces lead time. It makes it far easier to do other processes. And you know the many functions associated with other processes. Most of the IT, you know, softwares and applications allows information to be sent across all functional areas and all functional units can perform their duties accordingly. It reduces the lead time because one, the information being sent is more accurate and so the, 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 the delays and then the fact that we have to rework that usually results from poor or ambiguous or distorted information can easily be reduced. And the fact that information is also sent in a timely fashion also speeds the entire process of production and other activities in the organization. So this allows organizations to reduce their lead times requirement and it does improve customer service. Also, it enhances visibility across the entire supply chain. Visibility is so important. When we have very strong visibility, we are able to make very good or effective decisions. When we have understanding of the various parties, you know that in management, you are dealing with so many variables at a time. Your ability to understand how variables relate is based on your ability to relate these variables or have understanding or a broader understanding. And IT enables the organization to have access to that. Now, with a simple computerized system, you can have information concerning so many different functional areas. And when you are, for example, using decision support systems, it is able to facilitate your decision making to make it easier by relating so many variables and communicating to managers or advising managers concerning the phenomena and the interest. Now we need to look at also the trade-off issue that comes up when we are managing information and how it relates to other processing as well. We have already established that when we take the logistics activities, they exist within one unit called logistics system. But the logistics system has various parts or components, and they all come together to form the logistics system. Hence, we apply what we call the systems approach to managing the entire system, with the understanding that each element within the system affects 
and it is also affected by other elements within the same system in which they exist. That means that we're making decisions in each of the various components. It is very important to understand how it affects other areas, to make the right trade-offs in order to have an improved logistics system or to reduce the entire logistics cost. So when you look at the diagram, you realize that the various, um, the various you know, arrows show that there's a bi-directional relationship. That shows the interdependency amongst them. So, for example, once you are improving inventory management, it is affecting, for example, warehouses. So, when you take transportation and you want to try and improve it, it's possible it can also have a negative effect on warehouses. That example is well established. For example, when you want to, you know, do consolidation in our transport, by transporting in bulk, we are likely able to achieve lots of economies in transportation to reduce the transportation cost. The effect is that because demand depletes the goods gradually from our warehouses, we are going to have high levels of inventory in our warehouse. And that would mean that our inventory holding cost will likely also increase. So what do we do? Seeing that a reduction in transportation cost will not necessarily have a positive effect on the entire cost of logistics. It becomes essential to look at how it relates with other functions to do a trade-off in order to achieve a fair balance. Likewise, in our information system or the information, we also have various costs associated with information. And so once we are making an investment, we have to also look at the likely effects on other components. However, we have understood that when you are looking at the major drivers of supply chain, including the logistical drivers and the cross-functional drivers, for which information is one, we saw that information is a major driver that relates more positively with all the other variables. So that an investment in information, one, helps to reduce information cost and at the same time enables us to easily reduce the cost associated with the other elements, all things being equal. And that is why it is so vital. The driver that relates more positively with all the other drivers is information. And the more we invest in information, not only do we reduce the cost associated with information, we are also able to reduce the cost associated with the various elements within the logistics system. We must, I must, however, say that indeed, an initial cost information system can be, can be very high depending on the investment. But when you look at the long-term benefits, you realize that an investment in the IT has a high potential of reducing the information cost and also helping to reduce all the other, you know, costs, uh, all the other cost centers of logistics. And that is why IT investment helps to easily improve both efficiency and responsiveness, which are two major strategies that usually have a conflicting relationship. So organizations must be encouraged to invest so much in IT because an IT investment does promote, you know, the reduction of entire logistics cost. Now, let's begin to examine other cycle management as a very important component when we are managing information in the logistics. The other cycle, which is also referred to as the replenishment cycle or lead time, refers to the time from when a customer places and order to when goods are received. And it is the heart of the logistics information system. It is so important and key to driving the performance of the entire logistics operation. It is the starting point of all logistics activities. That is why it is important to manage the order cycle. And we also find a way to manage the orders. So order management refers to management of the various activities associated with the order cycle. These activities span from order reception to shipment to customer. So, for example, when we look at this diagram, you realize that the order cycle has actually been categorized into six major steps. Firstly, we look at customers placing orders, and then the orders received by the supplier, and then received and also fed into their system, that is if they are not simultaneously done, and then the order process, 
We also see that after the order is been posted, the orders are paid and passed, and the orders are shipped to the customer. And then once the customer receives the items in inventory, the process is ended. So the total order cycle time, once it reduces, it is able to increase customer satisfaction. The entire process is a measure of the customer service. And we've already established that customer service leads to customer satisfaction. In other words, it is one of the key determinants of customer satisfaction. Therefore, our ability to reduce total order cycle time will go a long way to improve on customer satisfaction. So order processing is well. When you go to the third stage, the order processing is key to the entire process. Sometimes it's just the order processing alone that can delay the entire process. Even though there are step-by-step -step processes that the order goes through or we have the order cycle, just the order processing alone within the order cycle period can prolong the entire period. And so when we look at the order processes, it includes checking for completeness and accuracy. It also includes customer credit check to find out whether the customer is worthy to be supplied with items. It also involves order entry into the computer system by the supplier. It also includes marketing department who also credits the salesperson in charge, accounting department records transactions, inventory department locates nearest warehouse to customer and advises them to pick the order, especially when they have multiple locations in managing their inventory or they have different warehouses or distribution centers. And then transportation department also will begin to arrange. So as we see, the order processing is cross-functional. It involves different functions coming together to ensure the entire process is implemented. For example, we have salespeople who come in to generate the order and submit the order for onward verification by accounting. They will do the credit checking, approve the credit, and generate the invoice. The manufacturing and production and other logistics activities will also come in to assemble the product and ship their product to the customer as well. You know that historically, customers personally submitted written order lists to salespeople, and then customers would also sometimes mail written order lists by post, or customers also telephoned order clerks in order to submit order lists. But currently, we see a high level of automation in the entire process. We see organizations who have actually integrated IT, you know, solutions in their order processing system. So we see lots of advanced order processing to actually speed the entire process of making orders. So a customer calls a supplier's customer rep. That is the current situation where we see that there's a lot of IT integration. And then, so once the customer calls a supplier's customer service rep, who, who is equipped with a computer terminal network to the supplier's database, or the customer orders by computer directly into the supplier system using such, you know, systems like EDI, that is electronic data interchange. So the current systems of integrating an IT into the entire process of making the order actually enables them to smoothen the entire process to achieve a seamless flow. Now, if you compare the manual system, you know, with the automated system, you realize that generally the manual systems are very slow and they usually are inconsistent and the inconsistencies can generate a lot of fragmentation within the entire process of ensuring for the material flow in the supply chain. And there are lots of errors and ambiguities in the system by using the manual system. And we also record lots of frequent information delays. And all these delays come together to really, you know, affect the supply chain effectiveness and then it does also restrict the company's ability to implement an integrative logistics management system we have already discussed the fact that the logistics efficiency and effectiveness thrives on ability to build a strong integration within the system we apply a systems approach to managing the entire you know supply chain process and without such integration it makes it so difficult to you know 
allow materials to flow in a very continuous man manner with very few interruptions. Therefore, having, you know, used the manual systems will cause a lot of difficulties and also fragmentation within the whole system of supply. And then if you, you use the manual system, you likely, you know, would record higher costs in your total transactions because we've established that using information systems that is based on an IT infrastructure does help to drive all the various activities within the logistics system, thereby improving customer service. It also has the inability to detect pricing errors, access clients' credit information, or determine inventory availability, which also come together to lead to lost sales and higher costs or reducing the manufacturer's available, uh, profitability. Sorry. So once you look at the automated system, you realize that integrating your system with IT does help to speed the entire process. And there's an extreme level of accuracy that we achieve. And this accuracy helps to meet demand appropriately. Usually when there's accuracy, we are able to avoid you know, issues of excess production and also stock out because production is made accurately. All right. And then also automating and integrating the other process frees time and reduces the likelihood of information delays and also distortions, thereby ensuring a stable variability across the entire supply chain. Usually when there are delays and distortions, it does increase the variability that we experience in others across the entire supply chain right from the retailers point through wholesalers manufacturers to the supplier stage within the entire supply chain and we have already discussed the the difficulty that supply chain partners face in maximizing the supply chain value when there's a lot of bullhead effect in the entire system automation helps managers to integrate the logistics system and allows them reduce costs through reductions in inventory and rate, you know, free to rate. Inventory is built to coincide with demand and also reduce issues of excesses and possibilities of stockout. It helps in achieving least total cost logistics. Why? Because information is seen to be the key driver of supply chain performance. One aspect that does, you know, drive all the activities of logistics positively is information. Therefore, integrating IT to actually improve the information quality goes a long way to drive performance in all the various logistics activities as we discussed. Now, we have already established previously that we apply the total cost concept to managing our logistics function with understanding that all the various elements have what interaction amongst themselves within the same logistics system in which they exist. Therefore, isolating them to achieve optimization would only, you know, result in functional optimization that actually fights against the effort to reducing the entire logistics cost. Therefore, an investment in IT automating the system will help to drive all the various drivers or let's say elements of the logistics system more positively to achieve least total cost of logistics. Now, advanced order processing systems are what organizations are using to reduce the cost of operations and also to improve upon its effectiveness. No component of the logistics function has benefited more from electronic and computer technology than order entry and then processing than when we look at, you know, these areas in the system. Some advanced systems are so sophisticated that Orders are generated automatically when stock reaches the reorder point. And the fact that such systems allows for simultaneous operations also does speed the entire process to actually help achieve a seamless flow in the entire process. Customers and salespeople increasingly transmit orders to distribution centers or corporate headquarters by means of EDI, email, or the internet. And these processes are very efficient and also effective because it speeds the entire process. The, the duplication of efforts is highly avoided. It avoids fragmentation in the system 
that have hurt the entire supply chain efficiency. And as the system is allowed to promote strong integration, it allows for the players within the supply chain to collaborate to maximize the supply chain value there. For example, this is a simple illustration of the process that orders go through till customers receive inventory of the items ordered for. For example, once we have a presentation of what you know the, the supplier has through the web browser, for example, customers can make their orders based on what they have seen to be available. It may go through various you know, medias, for example, the internet, the same internet can be used to make an order through to go to the main office or store of the supplier. And these orders are further entered into the organization system for the order to be processed. And during the processing, we have already looked at the various activities. And the fact that it takes a cross-functional, you know, activity to, you know, ensure that the order processing is made adequately or effectively and efficiently. So once the orders are processed, usually if the goods are available, then the items are picked from the warehouse for onwards, you know, packaging, for onwards supply to the client. And so it means that once the pick, you know, results is just generated, an invoice can also be generated for the client. So once the item is packaged, it may be sold directly to the customer or a will call uh, the, 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 the representative may also call the customer to receive the items that have been packaged for the client. It depends, of course, on the arrangement between the supplier or the seller and the client. Some clients want their items to be delivered at the doorstep. And of course, such responsiveness will attract extra charges. Sometimes to some customers will go to various centers or representatives of these sellers when you know where they will just have their items picked so all this process step by step process if organizations you know get the system automated it speeds the process improves accuracy thereby increasing the customer service level without such automation using the manual system can really prolong the entire system to reduce the satisfaction level of our clients now let's begin to look at logistics information systems. Some few, you know, issues that we discussed in the logistics information system. In, an, in a logistics information system, it actually comprises various people, equipment and procedures that interact together to make relevant information available to the logistics manager for the purposes of planning, implementing and controlling logistics activities. We are well established in our definition of logistics management that it engages in a lot of managerial functions, such as planning, implementing, and controlling. But these functions cannot be performed without valuable information. In other words, the extent to which our planning process is, becomes effective is highly dependent on the kind of information that the logistics manager receives. Therefore, the logistics information system actually comes in to provide relevant you know, information on either daily basis or periodic basis for the manager to take business decisions. And for this information to be produced, people, equipment, and producers must all together interact to be able to gel such information for the logistics manager. And we've already seen that information is a basic necessity for managers to make decisions on daily basis and also periodic basis. So for example, when we look at this structure, it simplifies the whole you know, activities that the logistics information system actually perform. For example, we have the logistics manager seen at the left side who requires for information from the logistics information system. He needs information because the manager makes lots of business decisions regarding transportation, regarding inventory control, regarding the warehousing and plant selection, regarding traffic and transportation, and regarding demand forecasting and so many other relevant information, even including how to improve customer service level. So within the logistics information system, you have to go through various procedures. So therefore, the equipment, the people and procedures 
are interacting to collect, analyze, store, retrieve, and disseminate information to the logistics manager for various decisions in the various logistics activities that have actually been noted now. So they send information in regular and customized reports, and that can be daily and periodically. So once he gets access to the information, the management decisions are made. But once the collection is being made, how the collection is done is very important because at each stage of these activities, how the people, equipment, and procedures interact will be very, very important to ensure for information quality. When the wrong types of tools, for example, or equipment are used to collect information, it can affect the information quality. For example, during the analysis, analysis must be done rightly with the right softwares, for example. Analysis can make meaning of the various variables that are necessary to make decisions. And how analysis is done can affect the results or not. And that is why we need that the system is well managed. Even storage retriever and how information gets disseminated. If the dissemination is, for example, not done right, information may be distorted along the process. And that is why within the entire process, we ensure for strong integration so that there's a high level of consistency achieved in the entire process. Without consistency, when information gets changed from one stage to another, it's possible that that will cause a strong fragmentation without the entire system. And we've already established the fact that a strong integration is necessary to actually improve on both efficiency and effectiveness within the entire logistics process. So once the LIS is used, there are various objectives of using the logistics information system. That facilitates logistics processes and operations because of its ability of providing high level of speed, accuracy, and high level of consistency. It also improves logistic decision making. One, by accurately acquiring and transmitting information efficiently to all concerned functions as and when required for decision making helps to improve decision making. It makes it fast and it makes it easier because of the improved visibility. So management is able to understand the various functions or the various variables that influence a particular phenomena and how these variables relate to one another within the same system in which they operate. So it does help to make management decisions more critical and analytical. It also helps to establish a strong strategic competitive advantage. Having a strong information system or using the LIS to provide valuable information helps build the strategic capability. Management is better positioned to become more strategic in its decisions. For example, with an LIS system, providing strong analysis will be able to yield results that aids management to make very strategic decisions. Not only, not only that, with an improved visibility, with a clear understanding of the many facets of a particular phenomenon, management is better positioned to become more strategic. When management has better understanding of the various variables they have to consider in making decisions, they become more strategic. Therefore, we can conclude that with a strong LIS system yielding valuable information, management strategic capability is built to promote competitive advantage in a firm. Not only that, it results in building a strong innovative capability as management gets exposed to valuable information and the ability to relate various variables. Management is able to become more creative and innovative. He's enabled to become innovative and creative because he has the intellectual ability that is free to make more strategic and innovative you know, you know, decisions within the firm. Therefore, once you invest in that, management, you know, is also able to easily decide when, what to produce, how much to sell, when to move, and how to move in the most effective manner. For example, sometimes it is so difficult to determine the right quantities of products to procure because once you are doing it through manual systems, 
without a strong LIS system. It makes it so difficult to achieve the right balance among the various conflicting variables. And if management must make a trade-off, with strong software to do strong analysis will help management to easily, you know, achieve a balance among the various, you know, variables of consideration. And also it enables monitoring and checking of inventory levels. Obviously, we have actually, you know, explained that making, you know, inventory counts can be so difficult and it's, it is further complicated when we see so many, vari or so many variety of inventory we have to deal with. But building a strong database that is easily updated using the software enables management to easily track and monitor, you know, inventory levels to take the right decisions at the right time. For example, if the software manages to communicate to management the reorder level, it is relatively and far easier for the manager to manage to maintain an appreciable inventory level that does improve on efficiency and customer service at the same time. Tracking of order status and shipment is made easier using IT systems. Or consumers can be given the opportunity, for example, to track on how their orders are performing within the order fulfillment process, thereby making a, a, the right decisions within their businesses to also improve on their own customer service. With a clear visibility of, you know, how the order, you know, order is progressing in the entire process, customers may not necessarily have to build extra inventory to protect them against uncertainty because they have understanding of how, you know, things are progressing and also including shipment. So once goods are, you know, are, are in transit, if customers can track, they can also make the right promises to their clients. All this will come together to build a strong relationship between business entities and their clients. And this is very necessary to achieve a sustainable supply chain. There's also rapid communication of orders. With a rapid communication of orders, organizations are better positioned to do very effective scheduling, which will allow production to coincide with demand. Therefore, matching supply and demand is more is made easier and it's, it's also done more accurately to avoid all kinds of lapses in the system. There's also increased product visibility and control. And like I said, when there is increased visibility, management is better positioned to make, you know, more strategic decisions within the system. With product visibility, supply chain partners also are more encouraged to collaborate to achieve efficiency and effectiveness within the entire process. Planning production based on actual demand is also another benefit from the LIS. One of the problems in the, in the supply chain that we are well acquainted with is the bullhoop effect. Usually a result from distorted information or the fact that supply chain partners keep on making, you know, forecasts based on orders rather than the actual demand forecast. But with the use of LIS, it provides real time data for organizations to actually make their forecasting. And usually what happens is that with the real-time data, the same data information, you know, data at the or data or information at the retail stage is shared across all supply chain partners, making it easier to achieve a stable variability. So that even if there's a variability between the the, the retailers, you know, you know, retailers estimate of order then it is the same variability maintained across the supply chain, thereby avoiding the bull effect. And this is very essential when we want to maximize our supply chain value. We are also able to reduce the cost appreciably and also increase revenue. All right, there's also rapid communication of product design, especially when we are considering concurrent design, where different functional areas are involved in the design process. With LIS, there's rapid communication to all the various units who are part of the design to speed the entire process. Now, organizations no longer have the luxury to wait for a long time before, you know, redesigning their product or introdu you know, introducing new products. So product design has become a key function of, you know, organizations. And of course, if you want to be a leader in your market, 
you must constantly explore, you know, ways of improving on your existing products or introducing new products altogether. And that is what organizations are using to achieve a strong competitive advantage in the market in which they exist. And how can that be? When information flowing among the various, you know, functional units who are in charge with, uh, you know, designing the new product, then it speeds the entire process to enable organizations to bring out new products to the market very, you know, quickly to compete. Rapid communication of product specification obviously will help to speed the entire process and reduce the lead time. Sharing of information, for example, among about defect rates, returns, etc., is also going to be very fast, easy, easily done to actually ensure for higher level of collaboration. It does also enhance economic value through the reduction of cost and also through the increment of sales within the entire supply chain. Creation of competitive advantage and also barriers to entry. Right, because those who use strong LIS systems are able to provide superior services that are very unique than what suppliers or their competitors are providing in the marketplace. Therefore, it can give them what we call a proprietary asset that is necessary to compete within the marketplace. Now, when we look at this very simple diagram, it explains the whole, you know, work of the logistics manager as he, he gets information from the logistics information system to operate. For example, in the LIS, the LIS gets information from both internal sources and external sources. Internal like finance, marketing, logistics, and other functional areas. And then externally from our customers, vendors, career supply chain partners, and various, you know, marketing conditions coming from even the outside, you know, the outs outside of the organization. So once this information, you know, are fed into the logistics system, like we said, it goes through analysis. So the collection is done, analysis is made, information is stored, it can be retrieved and also disseminated practically in either regular or customized format for the logistics manager to make various decisions. And these decisions can include the order management system, warehouse management system, or transportation management system. So, for example, under the warehouse management system, the decision regarding stock level, order picking, picker routing, picker assignments and workloading and product availability estimation will all be influenced by the kind of information the logistics manager receives from the LI. Therefore, if the stock level is managed well, to a larger extent, it will be influenced by the quality of information that is received from the allies. And that is why the allies must invest in the right people with the right expertise, must also invest in, in the right equipment. Likewise, the various procedures that are necessary to produce such valuable information to assist logistics managers in making various decisions within the logistics system. Therefore, in managing the LIS, various principles must guide the logistics managers in order to make sure that they actually are able to make good or let's say relevant decisions. For example, every LIS, every LIS must be guided by the issue of accuracy. Every information that the LIS is providing the logistics manager must be very accurate Accuracy means that it has to be devoid of errors. When there are errors, it will, post, it will negatively affect managerial decisions. Therefore, in the collection analysis, in the storage retrieval and dissemination, efforts must be directed to building a system that will yield an accurate information. Now we talk about availability. Whether the people who need this will be able to get access to it is very, very important. There's one thing producing information and also one thing making the information available to those who need it, those who have the legitimate right. And it's important that information is accessible, you know, to is accessible. And so those who need them should not struggle to get such information. But having it available is not enough. It has to be very timely. Once the users have access to timely information, they will be able to make decisions very quickly very you know 
spontaneously and very relevant to solve issues. A system that doesn't have, you know, the, the, the timely information can become highly inflexible and it becomes so difficult to adapt to, you know, situations. Sometimes we are able to take a lot of opportunities in the market because the information that is received is very timely. And then it has to be in the appropriate format. Information should be available in an appropriate format as per the user's needs or purposes. Without the right format, it can delay the whole process of just trying to, you know, put it in the right format, maybe trying to convert it into the right format. Or sometimes some personnel may be ignorant about how to even do the conversion. That can be very difficult. Sometimes being another format can also slow down the entire process. And it's appropriate that we put information in the right format to speed the process and make it also easier for management. Also, the issue of consistency or reliability is very important. Information that is being sent across must be very consistent throughout the entire system. It must not change from one area to another, but it has to be very, very consistent. And this is why compatibility of all databases is very important. Sometimes incompatibility can cause information to keep on changing from one state to another. So the LIS must ensure that there's overall compatibility in system procedures and what have you, so that there wouldn't be inconsistency. Inconsistency will further, you know, break down, you know, the issue of integration. We do not want fragmentation in the entire system. Integration is required to speed the entire process to achieve a seamless flow. Transparency of meaning is also very important. The meaning must be clear. Based on its context, it must be clearly understood. and must be commonly, and that is why unnecessary jargons must be avoided. And so once information is being communicated, considerations must be made to design, language, even appropriateness of, you know, the fonts. They are all very necessary considerations to communicate clearly. When there are pictorial, you know, illustrations, it has to be very clear and understood. Even social and cultural issues may have to be considered to influence the design and the communication issues. Because the essence is that it is based on the meaning that the logistics manager will make various decisions. And so the meaning based on its context must be very clear and understood by the users. Now let's look at a few, you know, logistics information technologies that have really enabled logistics organizations to achieve both efficiency and effectiveness. We are going to briefly look at barcoding, point of sale, EDI or electronic data interchange. We are going to look at RFID, DSS, decision support system, artificial intelligence, and then expert systems. These are a few ones we want to pick and look at right now. All right. So when we take barcoding, barcoding is easily seen on most of the consumer items we buy in most of the shops or the malls. Barcode is a sequence of parallel bars of various widths with varying amounts of space between them. The pattern and spacing convey information. So without using an optical scanner, it appears to be a normal line, but these lines do convey information. And so once we use optical scanners called barcode readers, you will be able to clearly read the information that is contained in the lines. So the information contained in the bars is read directly into a computer. Barcoding can be useful in logistics applications. And those who are doing this, especially retailing, use it a lot in their sales. But in our warehousing, in our shipping, in our material handling, barcoding is essential to convey information to various partners within the supply chain. To achieve a whole coordinated system of moving items and storage, barcoding can actually enable the practitioner to get access to information without necessarily struggling to get access to the product details. So particularly in track and trade situations, when we want to track items or trade items, the barcoding can easily be used to just track. And this is very, very essential and especially can enable reverse logistics activities to actually be carried out effectively. Now, when we take the point of sales data, 
It is actually the technology that allows fans in real time to know what and where an item is being sold through scanning of individual barcodes when an item is purchased at the retail level. So the essence of it is that once the supplier gets access to that, he can easily monitor the inventory levels at the retail you know, point as sales is actually being recorded in real time, not in latter time, actively communicating that information. So the POS actually involves the scanning of barcodes of items sold generally at the retail level and the data may be transmitted to the relevant supplier who can replenish the inventory based on actual sales. So usually suppliers do this in order to be able to match their supply to their, their client's demand without experiencing too much excesses or shortages within their inventory. And sometimes to such information also guides in the production scheduling activity so that supply can coincide with demand. It helps to match demand and supply within the entire process of you know supply chain all right so quick response and efficient consumer response integrate the pos data in an effort to speed time to market thereby supporting time-based competition whilst reducing inventories and improving or maintaining high customer levels so customers you know organizations are able to respond very you know speedily when the supply chain strategy emphasizes responsiveness there is one of the approaches that is used in order to compete very well in time-based competition. So using this information enables for product forecasting, which allows managers to make better purchase decisions and customization and reduce the chance that an item will be out of stock. So this is very essential to even reduce forecasting errors. So managers are able to use real-time data. And that is why the POS is one of the suggested approaches to dealing with the bull hip effect in the entire supply chain. Instead of using orders, previous orders, extrapolating the past trend into the future, what managers do is that they get access to the real-time data and use that to focus. And this one, you are able to you know, achieve high levels of accuracy in our forecast. And remember that managers no longer have the luxury to actually do forecasting over a, a, a very long time horizon because of competition. Time-based competition necessitates speed, necessitates that you speedily respond to customer orders. Availability is based on speed. Time is of high essence in a time-based competition. Therefore, every effort towards forecasting must yield high accuracy. And you, you know, doing forecast over longer, you know, time horizon can actually you know, recall lots of errors and make it very difficult for organizations to compete. And then we have electronic data interchange. So EDI is the process of transferring standard business information or documents electronically, right from one computer to another within and between organizations. So the human intervention is avoided. So once, you know, um, a customer wants to make an order, he just sends information via a computerized system. That goes directly into the seller's computerized system. So there's that electronic exchange. So the human intervention that usually results in information distortion or delay is easily avoided. This one promotes the speed and accuracy with which information is sent. So it is an intra and or inter-organizational computer to computer exchange of business data in a standard machine processable you know, format. So the purpose of EDI is to just eliminate duplicate data entry and to improve the speed and accuracy of information flow by linking computer applications between companies. So within the unstructured system, that usually use the manual systems of communicating data, for example, we see that most organizations are more, you know, inclined towards using the fax, the emails, the person to person. And these, you know, Angles are seen, or these processes are seen to prolong the entire process of fulfilling another, especially person to person can be very, very difficult and even cumbersome, and it is more error prone. But when you go you go to the structure system, such as using EDI, order entry, and then computer to computer, you see, an EDI which makes order entry computer to computer, it speeds the entire process. 
the human intervention is completely avoided and as it's fed into it directly there's high level of consistency in terms of the information that is sent across you don't see so much distortions because the same information being fed is what is sent throughout the entire process and the and the good side of it is that the other receipt and other entry are simultaneously done and so it allows the process to actually flow very efficiently and effectively so bill payment confirmation package tracking bills of lading can all be supported by the edi very appropriately so this is a simple illustration of the edi as you know compared to the traditional methods so in the upper part of this you know diagram we see the traditional methods where buyers use purchase orders usually in paper formats or that is usually when it is sent through you know the people or personnel or through the post office or maybe use the fax system so they produce the purchase order and then in usually in paper format and send through these means and then it gets into the seller's you know organization and it is further fed into the system so within this process as information is going from one stage to another it can be highly delayed and highly distorted in the process especially when organizations receive the orders and they must now feed their you know system with the information sometimes the information gets distorted and it further worsens you know the buhi before it magnifies the variability of the orders across the entire supply chain but when we look at the edi operation we realize that it is purely an exchange of information electronically so right from one computer to another the information is fed directly so the delays that we record as people are sending information the delays through the post office and sometimes receiving it in a fast format before re-entering are all avoided and also the fact that there are possibilities of you know inconsistency wrong information received and all that is avoided sometimes personnel send the wrong information your the right information to wrong organizations for example and likewise the post sometimes there are wrong deliveries but with the computer to computer we achieve high levels of accuracy because it is directly sent and shared between the various computers of the entities in question so therefore edi has various benefits like quick access to information better customer services obviously because the lead time is highly reduced and then because of the high level of accuracy it improves the effectiveness right the right things are done you get your right product at the right place at the right time in the right condition and also giving you the right cost as well then there's reduced paperwork the cumbersome paperwork and the frustration most people may have to go through in producing work and also the fact that keeping so many files and papers can also add up to it it's an opportunity to reduce the cost associated with managing information this is it is more flexible when you are using the paper it is more rigid and things must be done in terms and you have to you know consider so many different kinds of sheets representing different organizations imagine you are dealing with 100 organizations at a time you are receiving different you know you know papers from these organizations by using the edi it is just directly and so it is so flexible it makes the capacity of the firm very flexible to operate and even adapt to changing situations there's better communication that further you know strengthens you know supply chain relationship that increase productivity throughout the entire process and all the other logistics activities we've talked about are also further improved because the information quality is very important and then there's greater accuracy throughout the entire process there's cost efficiency obviously and correct understanding of customer needs because of the high level of consistency the system is able to you know yield and then there's improved bailing as well that the issue of just confusing you know different orders of different you know of customers is easily avoided usually the system is fed directly into the their computer the the order processing system of the organization so it goes it is it, it just it, it's a simultaneous operation so it's it's easily it is a link to 
the, the consumer's information. So it improves the billing of customers and even various other checks within the other processing system. Now let's look at the radio frequency identification, which is the RFID. It's a type of automatic identification system. So instead of identifying materials or objects manually, it has been done automatically. So this device enables the you know logistics you know practitioners to identify objects in an automatic manner. It is a technology used to help identify, also authenticate and track objects and people as well. So if you want to authenticate something and be sure and all that, the system also allows. So not only identifying the particular product at the time, it does help to authenticate it. And it also helps in tracking, tracking items or objects within the system. It can also be used to gather and store information about objects and people as well as the environment. We already learned in the logistics information system that there is an activity of collection. And the collection process also can affect the quality of information. So, for example, using RFID can easily assist organizations to efficiently collect and effectively collect data in order to improve upon its value. All right, so radio frequency identification system consists of what we call the reader and a tag. So it operates like the barcode. So just like the barcodes have parallel lines attached to a product where a reader is used to just, an optical scanner is used to read the information contained in the lines, in the lines radio frequency identification also operates in a similar manner. It has a reader and that is what is used to actually, you know, you know, just read the information contained and the tag is what is attached to the object in question. So this is how the tag also and then the reader look like. So once the tag is attached to the object, then the reader can be used to actually identify or read the information. So the tag is placed on the entity as I said for identification. And this can be an object, an animal or even human being. So when the tag on the attached entity gets within a reading distance, once the reading distance permit, permitted is just is within it, the reader or transceiver, as it's also called, communicates via radio frequency modulation with the tag to decipher the identity of the entity the tag is attached to. So the data transmitted by the tag may provide identification, location information, and specifics about the product tag, such as price, the color, the date of purchase, and all these are relevant information um, you know, we need in order to manage the flows within the entire supply chain. So it can be used just about anywhere from clothing tags to missiles to pet tags to food. Anywhere that a unique identification system is required, the RFID can actually be used. So once you look at how it operates, this is how it conveys the information through the whole you know, system. All right. So the, the RFID tag or transponder is actually the electronic component attached. So the, the tag that we attach is an electronic component to allow for the information to be contained in that format. So it is made up of a silicon memory chip and copper or aluminum antenna. And it is often sealed in paper or foil covers as we see that. And it comes in various, you know, forms or variety. We have both the active the passive and then the active as well. And for the active tag, that is why we say it is battery powered and hence it is active all the time. So they broadcast a signal to the reader and can transmit over long distances. But the passive is not like that. And that is why its usage is usually for, you know, high value goods like vehicles and large containers of goods. It is active all the time because it is battery powered. But when we take their passive tag, they do not possess their own power source. So they draw their power from the radio wave generated by the reader itself. So that they are active, that is when a reader is nearby to power them, without which they are very passive. So the reader transmits a low power radio signal through its antenna to the tag, which in turn receives it through its own antenna to power the integrated circuit or chip. All right, so they have practical read distances that ranges from about 10 centimeters. And so they have a smaller memory capacity and are cheaper to manufacture, making them 
a deal for tracking lower cost items. And they are the most, you know, the ones that are mostly used by, you or commonly used by pen. Now, when we compare the RFID's operations with the barcoding, we realize that there are lots of similarities amongst them. However, the RFID appears to provide more advanced benefits or functions than the barcode. So when we see different criteria, you realize that and compare the barcode and then the RFID, you realize that the RFID is more, you know, it's more uh, advanced. For example, when we take the read or write capability, we say that it, it is not, you know, applicable for the barcode, but with some types of tasks for the RFID, it does. So when you look at the various criteria and compare, generally you realize that the RFID, you know, is more, you know, it's more advanced than that of the barcode. And all the criteria include, for example, the read capability, the, the read speed, the read range, then the spectrum, the data storage, location information, security durability, and manpower needed to operate them. And once you compare each one, against the other you realize that the rfid appears to be more advanced than the barcode so this is how the rfid is used in terms of having the reader and as you see the tags attached to the object then you can easily use it to identify or authenticate it or even track it all right so walmart uses the rfid a lot in its operations and each level and how it is used for example in stage one, it says that suppliers add RFID sensors to jeans at the point of manufacture. And then in two, workers can scan the garment with electronic readers and build a database detailing all the sizes and custom fits available. And then the three, workers can scan the stacks of jeans to discover which sizes have sold out and need to be replenished. And then the fourth says that customers who purchase the jeans take the sensors home when they leave the store, but throw them in the trash along with other packaging before wearing them. All right. So in the warehouse, for example, you see how the RFID is assisting in identifying products as well. So it has so many benefits. For example, there's high or improved inventory accuracy. You don't necessarily have to be doing inventory count, you know, directly, but the RFID can easily provide such accuracy. It also improves productivity and efficiency. There's in reduced cost. And because there's speed, speed is a function of productivity, or let's say time is a function of productivity. And everything, anything that you know speeds a process actually helps to improve upon the productivity of that kind of process. Identifying items by using RFID is very fast and fa faster than most systems in operation. All right, and then it reduces obviously the cycle time and the incidence of rework. And the rework means that if reduction one reduces the waste in the system and also reduces, you know, customer, you know, dissatisfaction. And then reduce cycle time makes customers happy. It enables organizations to also compete very well in a time based, you know, competitive market because they're able to get products available you know, available in real time or very timely in the market. It increases sales and reduces privilege, obviously, and also reduces cost factors within the process. And it's also very versatile and flexible to operate with such a system. And we know that when something is versatile or flexible, it helps the organization to easily adapt to changing needs in the market. We are operating in an environment with high level of dynamism coming from different sources, some fairly controllable, some highly uncontrollable, right? And so how to be able to deal with your market needs will be based on how versatile your operations are or how flexible your operations are. And RFID does enable organizations to achieve high level, you know, flexibility in the system to be able to adapt to changing situations. It does improve data storage and access, all right? And also improve supply chain traceability. Usually, especially if this is so very important and makes reverse logistics activities relatively easier. You know, issues of accountability and all that are very important in credibility. And it is RFID, one of the means of just ensuring for 
traceability within the entire supply chain process. You can easily trace and know product locations and easily build a strong, you know, network system. So it has so many applications from, you know, in terms of tracking services, the, you know, electronic passports and what have you. So these are all even human beings can all be, you know, be used in, in uh, this application can also be used in terms of human beings as well as I have already mentioned. Now let's look at decision support systems. DSS is an integrated system that provides information to aid decision makers in making better choices than would otherwise be able to. Remember that when we say decision support system, they do not replace the judgment of managers. They do not just make irrelevant, you know, the, 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 the role of managers. They rather make the managerial role more effective by supporting with a lot of advice. So they, they, they assist decision support. They support managers in making decisions. And sometimes they make it so fast and it tells management to move the, uh, you, you know, move from, you know, tactical operations to provide a lot of strategic, you know, options for organizing. It frees up the intellect of managers to think strategically and compete very strategically in the market rather than just leaving them to be concerned with just, just any kind of issue. No, it is not supposed to be. Especially in a highly competitive market, managers need to build their strategic and innovative capacity in order for them to compete very well in the market and to be able to do that their minds and intellect must be free enough to be able to use their intellect in a more strategic manner and this is the essence of using decision support systems to aid managers in making you know decisions very effectively so examples of of use include simulation application specific software and then data mining all these are examples of ways to just assist managers to make decisions very fast and also make them very strategic. So the artificial intelligence tools can be incorporated into DSS, which may contain decision analysis frameworks, forecasting models, simulation models, and linear programming models to assist managers. And they can be used to assist in a wide variety of logistics, you know, and decisions such as evaluating alternative transportation options and certain inventory levels now leading you know organization leaders in most industries are really using these systems to make their decisions very fast and especially when you are dealing with lots of you know complex issues or you you have a very you know wide area of operation or scope of operation and especially knowing that supply chains are more global than before and the fact that the more global organized the supply chains have become the more complex operations have become these softwares and applications are making it easier for organizations to improve their visibility and have a more a higher or a relatively higher control over operations when you have more flexibility without these systems management goes through a lot of difficulty and it means that without these software it makes management strategic capability very low in order to compete with leaders in the market so in a decision support system there's what we call the data acquisition and there is how data is acquired and then so um and then once data is acquired it is data is also processed and then data is presented so the processing of the data will show the results that management needs in order to make the various decisions so there are what we call the public databases the user input and then the user databases in order to help with the acquisition of data as well. And then it is fed continuously into the process for data processing so that all the various analysis and the modeling will show the various results for management to make the needed decision. Now, when you take the domain of artificial intelligence by itself, it is actually the branch of computer science concerned with making computers behave like human beings. So they behave like human beings, but they are computers. And they have strong abilities to do very difficult and complex work. That otherwise would be difficult to, to, to do using just the human intervention. And so the speed with which these, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, applications work will help managers to speed the entire process. 
There is a comprehensive term encompassing a number of areas, including computer-aided instruction, voice synthesis and recognition, robotics, natural language translators, and expert systems. So AI can be used to model response time, requirements for customer delivery, transport routing and cost, warehouse location analysis, and inventory level control. And now we see, you know, organizations, you know, using these robotics a lot in their warehousing operations for packing and packing and other kinds of, you know, operations in the other logistics activities as well. And these are making these operations very fast, very efficient. There, there's minimal errors. They are so, their consistency level is also high. So they make the system so efficient and effective. And it tells the system to achieve high levels of flexibility. So when your system is versatile, as I've already established, it makes an organization, you know, build a capability to easily adapt to changing situations in the market. When you take the expert system, for example, these are subsystems of artificial intelligence in terms of its operation. So an ES is a computer program that uses knowledge and reasoning techniques to solve problems normally requiring human ability. For example, there are expert, you know, systems that can diagnose human illnesses, you know, make financial forecasts and schedule routes for delivery vehicles. And some are designed to take the place of human experts, while others are designed to aid them. So it helps, it supports a lot, and sometimes it helps to manage your personnel level without necessarily having to increase the number of you know, personnel in the system. So it incorporates a knowledge base containing accumulating accumulated experience and a set of rules for applying the knowledge base to each particular situation that is described in the program. Now let's begin to look at the internet influence of logistics. In fact, the internet, you know, actually provides an avenue for companies to directly reach customers, especially since a large proportion of the world's population uses the internet now the internet has actually provided organizations with the opportunity to integrate to so many partners of the supply chain and also reach diverse kinds of customers you know within from all corners of the globe so it is easier because of the internet it has reduced you know the distance coverage that is required to even you know you know interact with various stakeholders within the business environment so the internet has become a strong field integrating all kinds of parties within the supply chain. So three specific influences on logistics include online retailing, where we see lots of retailers selling their products online. And one major advantage is that it allows for virtual, you know, virtual, you know, display, just a virtual display of items. And some of these displays are not necessarily real. And so it reduces the facility required to display items to the public. And this does help reduce the cost of operations to the extent that some retailers are just engaged in drop shipment, where they just manage the orders of clients and forward to manufacturers who, you know, who actually ship the items directly to customers. And that is what is referred to as drop shipping. So a lot of players are able to operate without physical infrastructure. And this does reduce, you know, the cost of operations, making the supply chain very, very, very efficient. We have what we call the on-demand software, which, for example, means that companies can now pay for software based on usage rather than upfront total purchase. And because it is not upfront, it reduces cost of operations. This allows a lot of organizations, especially small, small organizations, to have access to high-end software solutions. So the cost burden of getting, you know, the whole total purchase paid is actually removed from the, you know, the shoulders of these small companies and it actually facilitates production and, you know, the operations. So these software are also, you know, cloud-based as well. So we have what we call the electronic procurement, which is also receiving much recognition these days. There's been a lot of you know, revolution when it comes to the procurement processes. Now, most organizations are doing electronic procurement due to the internet, you know, the internet that provides them with that opportunity. It has reduced cost of traditional procurement and improved efficiency. Now that organizations are doing what we call offshore purchasing, 
all right where's one of the ways that organizations are able to do that with ease not all organizations or it is not so necessary to travel all over the country because you want to source you know your items from different you know sources no you can easily buy by going through the internet to just you know get you know to contact with leaders or let's say suppliers in the field where you require your raw materials to be and it has provided that opportunity for organizations to be able to explore you know over a large you know geographical area without having the benefit right the, the difficulty of traveling over such geographical distance but not without the challenges information technology itself has been an enabler for logistics development and growth indeed those who are leaders are utilizing it a lot in their operations and they've been able to achieve high levels of efficiency and effectiveness through information integration and when we say information technology it is one enabler of achieving a strong integration in the entire supply chain and most suppliers and you know other partners in the supply chain are ready to collaborate or motivated to collaborate when there's information technology available it makes it relatively easier to collaborate with other partners especially who are located in so many different areas within the globe so it is a tool that can help managers you know manage their organizational problems but it is not an end all solution for organizational problems and we need to understand this as managers and actually put the right measures in place because once you are making investments in it it also does come with its own disadvantages for example the cost of hardware and software can be very very huge and sometimes it can impede the entire process if you are just waiting to just get these softwares and hardware before it operates and depending on the application it can be extremely you know expensive or not but generally in the long term once an investment has been made the benefit will definitely be accrued lack of know-how or skills sometimes there are lots of applications even there are you know different ones coming up all the time you know and the trend shows that it is developing faster than all areas of business yet you will need the technical know-how in order to be able to operate a particular application and sometimes without the know-how whatever you have may become very very irrelevant sometimes employees may resist their it implementation due to social cultural psychological issues and all that and sometimes people resist change because they, they they need to learn in order to adapt and they are not willing to learn and sometimes so they feel so comfortable in particular positions that the change actually is, is something difficult for them to you know understand therefore in order to have a successful it implementation a whole change management is required the entire process must be well managed including you know educating employees and also motivating them to actually adapt to various changes regarding its implementation sometimes when people understand the essence of things they are more motivated and sometimes we will need to collaborate come into some kind of negotiations with our employee to motivate them to just adjust to the changes and then poor implementation due to poor objectives sometimes some of these objectives can also restrict very successful implementations privacy and security concerns also come up for consideration sometimes to the commercial risk that some proprietary information may be leaked to competitors is also another thing sometimes those your personnel who handle your information when they are no longer in your organization some organizations fear they will just leak out the information to their competitors in the market this brings us to the end of this model on logistics information system we have learned a lot about the area we have understood that information is a basic necessity for aging management decisions therefore investment in it enables to improve information quality therefore it is very essential for organizations to integrate it in the entire process we have also looked at the essence of managing the entire order you know cycle time in order to speed our response to the marketplace seeing that now fans face what we call the time-based 
competition. We have also looked at how the logistics information system operates and the fact that it comprises the interactive, you know, the interaction amongst, you know, people, equipment, and then procedures, and the need to make sure that there's right investment to facilitate all the various activities in the LIS to include the collection of data, analysis of data, storage of data, retrieval of data, and dissemination of the data. We have also learned various technologies, LIS technologies, including barcoding, including EDI, electronic data interchange. We have also learned about the RFID. We've looked at the artificial intelligence, decision support systems, and other ones we also considered. And all together, we've generally seen that these technologies are very relevant to improving upon our efficiency and effective, you know, effective goals within the supply chain. Therefore, investment in these areas will be very, very important. We've seen the various benefits of them. We've also seen how the internet has positively impacted on logistics operations. But we have also looked at some challenges that come up when we try to use IT, including resistance to implementation by our employees and the fact that some investment in hardware and software may be also costly. And sometimes when there are poor objectives, it can also impede the successful implementation of our IT. Therefore, all these actually encourage organizations to make the right investment, but also be, be very mindful of how they manage their IT systems or technologies and their whole logistics information system. Now, I know that you have really appreciated the field of IT and how it has positively influenced logistics. And we conclude that it is an enabler of logistics development and growth. And all those who are ready to actually adapt to the IT systems in place stand the position of actually having a great competitive advantage in the marketplace. So this brings us to the end of this model on logistics information system. Now, the next model is on global logistics. We are going to appreciate what the global logistics means well, what is the global supply chain? Appreciate some complexities and also try and understand some, you know, factors that influence organizations to go global, some government influences and some advantages and obstacles to global logistics as well. See you in our next class. Bye.